Morning, YouTube. Or is it afternoon? I don't know. It's Monday. It all feels the same. So we're going to talk about this guy today. This is the GoPro Hero 10 Black. Their latest and greatest. It's not so great. Um, I'll let you know what's going on with it. Same, well, very similar to what happened with my, my, my 9. I had to hear... You know, prior to and up to including the 8, the GoPro has been kind of the go-to. They sent the benchmark for action cams. Um, they've gotten better. They've got some amazing features. The image stabilization is amazing. The quality is amazing. Um, and I think part of the problem is them trying to go more compact. So what we have is these devices that have just an amazing amount of processing power and cool features, but they're not reliable. Very subjective uh, to, to overheating issues. My issue with the 9, it would work great for months, and then it would just crap out. And the problem there was different. Um, it would just lock up, and you'd have to pull the battery out to reset it, which is a pain in the ass when you're on a motorcycle ripping down the track or carving up a, a mountain road or something. And you realize, oh, nothing's recording. And that's what really sucks. When you're doing action cam, you're in the moment. You're trying to capture a moment maybe for your your own, you know, purposes or for, you know, a YouTube channel like I do. And, um, you know, you get to the end of a really good run following some people. And they're like, cool, did you get the footage? And you're like, no. Uh, can, we, can we go down the road and do that again? Try to recapture it? It's a pain in the ass, you know? Um, and certainly if you're using it, I mean, if you're using it for a wedding or something else, it's not like you say... Oh, shit, it didn't record. Could you do the vows over again? You know what I mean? <laughs> so having a camera that's reliable is important. And the 9 just was plagued with issues. They would have firmware updates, all this stuff, and it just never fixed it. And it was a growing problem with GoPro. Reading up on the company a bit, read up on the CEO, the guy who started the company, almost ran the company into the ground. Um, I think at one point he was the highest paid CEO of any company in America. You know, he had his private jets and was basically, you know, using the his success in the company as a private piggy bank. And um, I think some investors pulled out and got tired of it. And the company has suffered as a result in the R&D and in the quality control. So didn't learn my lesson with the 9. I figured, okay, maybe the 9 was the anomaly because everything I owned before that was great. So I upgraded to the 10. And I've had it since March, so six, five and a half months now, something like that. And now it's having problems. And its problems are overheating. So it's been working fine. I've gotten some great footage out of it. But now I'm hitting the hottest months of the year, and it overheats quickly. So on a morning run when it's cloudy, it worked fine. Then in the afternoon when the sun's out and it's 92 degrees, I, I would press record. I hear it beep. I see it recording. And then... 35, 40 seconds later, it shuts off. I'm like, so push it, turn it on again. And then 30 seconds later, it shuts off. So when I bought this, I paid, I got it cheaper than normal because it was like 550 bucks. But if you signed up for the $50 a year subscription plan, whatever, that gave you extended service and cloud so solutions and stuff like that, then I think I got it for $399. So I called them up today because with that subscription, you're supposed to get premier service and up to two replacements a year if you smash them, you know, skiing or whatever. And so I'm talking to them, and I'm talking to someone who's clearly not in a U.S. call center. They're somewhere overseas. Nice enough woman, but struggling a little bit with the accent um, and her trying to just follow a script instead of just listening to me when I'm talking. I'm trying to get a replacement. And instead, she's like, well, we have to try these other things first. And she said to me, well, these are prone to overheat depending on the settings you're using. So let's turn down your, she said, what are you running it at? I said, it's a 5.3K camera, but I'm only running it at 4K60. I have um, image stabilization on boost. I'm running medium sharpness and high bit rate. Fairly standard action stuff. I'm not trying to do 120 frames, but you know, 60. And she's like, well, what we're going to try to do before we replace it is we're going to, um, I'm going to walk you through how to reduce the settings. I'm going to turn the settings down. And I'm like, why would I? turn the settings down. Well, that way it'll it'll run cooler. I go, listen, this was on the motorcycle. So this was up and it was on a bike that it was on my Triumph. So there's no windscreen. This was directly in the wind. So whatever 
speed over the speed limit I was riding that day, I've got, you know, 90 mile an hour wind blowing over it. So it's not sitting there in my hot garage for half an hour with no wind, because that's one of the things I say. It's a, well, it's an action camera. So it's meant to be, you know, out being used and, and, and where the air is circulating. And that's what helps keep the chassis cool. Um, it uses, you know, the chassis as a heat sink. And when wind blows across it, that helps dissipate that heat. And I said, well, I'm on a motorcycle. It's getting blasted by wind. It's like sitting there with a high output fan on it. And she said, well, yeah, but you know, you gotta, you, you gotta turn the settings down. And I'm like, why did I buy a 4K 60 camera if I have to drop it down to 1080p? Because I understand how this works, right? It takes a lot of processing power to process 4K 60 with image stabilization and all that kind of stuff on. But it's made for that. It's actually made for higher. It's made for 5.3K, which is considerably higher than that. But I'm struggling, and a lot of people apparently have been struggling. I think, Wesley, you had the problem too, at 4K60. And I said, well, what is the purpose of me reducing the image quality? Why did I spend the money on the latest and greatest 4K or above camera if I can't actually run at that? I have to wait for the winter months. You know, It seems like this is a great camera, and you won't have problems with overheating if you're using it for snowboarding or skiing or whitewater rafting, or or maybe surfing, where water splashing on it and cooling it. It seems to me like a very poor design. And that's always the problem, is everyone wants something tiny and compact and light. But when you do that, whatever thermal efficiency you have, that processor is creating and generating all that heat. You have a smaller heat sink. It's like, okay, I'm gonna take my, my ZX14, and in order to drop a little weight, I'm gonna take the radiator, and I'm gonna chop it in half. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, the bike might lose a couple pounds between the radiator and we'll take the cooling fan off and um, it'll have less coolant capacity. Okay, it dropped four pounds, but now the engine's overheating. Even when I'm flying down the road, it can't dissipate the heat. And that's the problem with the GoPros now. So I have switched to the Insta360 One RS with the 4K Boost mod. And if you watch my, my, my video, um, from this weekend at the track. I had some issues, apparently, I don't know if I didn't click the button right or if it was something, but when I did figure it out and I made sure it was recording, it recorded great video. It also went for the full session without having to chop the videos, um, chop like a single shot into multiple five gigabyte files like this does. Um, it was able to save it as one big file. So, you know, maybe that'll limit you if you're still running Windows in, in 98 or you don't have... Um, you know, if you're still on a FAT32 file system instead of NTFS or whatever the, the newest um, standards are that let you go over, you know, the three gigabyte limit. But um, <clears throat> it was very telling that her first thing before she could replace it was to see if I could go run it in this heat at lower resolution. And if that resolves it, then they wouldn't need to replace it. She's like, because I don't want to send you a new one and have it overheat. I'm like, well, why would it be overheating if it's not a flawed design? If it if it can't do the things that it's designed to and the things that you advertise it and is one of the compelling reasons to purchase said camera, if it can't actually do that without running into problems or it can only do that for snow in winter months where it's gonna keep it chill, I said, then I don't need this camera. I'm not gonna downgrade, I'm gonna, I mean, I said, I, 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 she's like, well, that's just kind of what we recommend. And I said, well, if you went out and bought a new 4K TV and you could only watch like 20 minutes of a show before it overheated and shut down and you called Samsung and they said, well, what you need to do is just drop it down to 720p and then you, you can watch TV all afternoon. You'd be like, that's not a solution. That's not a fix. You're telling me to downgrade or limit the use of my thing below its advertised specs why would I spend the extra money on a 4K TV if I can only watch it at 720? Why would I buy a 5.3K at 60 if I can't even run it at 4K? And you're telling me I, in order to get it to work properly, I've got to drop it to 1080p? Which looks okay, but I, I didn't need this. I could have gone with a much cheaper camera and I didn't need this and an annual subscription and all that to pay for, for you to tell me that, yeah, basically without saying it, the camera doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It's a very flawed design, um, which is a shame because it takes the best video out there when it works. The problem is, is in the summer months in Georgia, it often doesn't.
So I don't know. I'll see if I can finagle them. I'm waiting for a call from their tech people to run through some tests with me. But uh, I, I just, I have a feeling this will be my last GoPro product. And it sucks because they really built this industry. I mean, GoPro is what brought all the vloggers and YouTubers and action videos and even films. You know, there's companies that are using this, you know, for their blockbuster films for some of the scenes where the actor's running around and they'll have it attached to the rifle or something. So you're seeing that first person perspective as I smash into my table and shake my camera. Um, you know, so they do a lot of cool things, but the company's just gone downhill and their product has really suffered and it's just, it's not worth it anymore. So there's the Insta360. I've got the 4K mod. I'll probably will upgrade that cube at some point to that one inch Leica mod, which is supposed to be, that puts it on par with this. Right now, I don't notice a whole bunch of difference between the 365 footage that I have from the track this weekend. It's like 95% as good as this has ever been. So it's it's right there. The one the one inch mod is a much bigger sensor, and especially in lower light when you're like riding if it's cloud and you're going through the trees, that's where that thing really comes into its own. And then it does actually take better than GoPro. But I'm going with 360 with the Insta stuff. They're they're really mixing it up. The the battery is separate, and you have the module that does the recording, but then you click off the, the another cube and put on a different lens, one that's got a 4K lens facing forward and back, and then you get the 360 panoramic, like, and then you can choose your shots afterward. They've got the 4K mod, uh, I'm sorry, the, the one inch mod that's got the big giant zoom lens, super wide angle. I mean, they're, they're doing some cool things, but most importantly, they're more reliable. So was customer service nice? Yeah, but I'm not really happy with that answer. Between what I'm reading, and I have my suspicions that there's another flawed design. Put it out, and uh, it's it's not it's not going to deliver. Um, and her telling me that basically you've got to reduce your quality settings to way below its advertised specs. Come on, GoPro. You guys are like what a billion dollar company or something like it. I mean, you guys are supposed to be really profitable and and selling a gazillion of these things. Um, not cool. Not cool. So anyway, that's my experience with this. Let me know if you've had a GoPro 9 or especially the new 10 with similar issues with overheating. Um, I'd be curious to see just how widespread this is. So anyway, enjoy. Leave comments, subscribe, like. We're going to have some new content coming. I may get a 360 lens for that. I'll get that before I get the one inch. The 4K is doing pretty well. Um, but I'm thinking of getting one of those double front and back lenses. And uh, that'd be kind of cool to do some riding videos. You see it forward and I'm doing voiceover and I can pan around to the side to the person I passed or I passed me or then back to my face and then pan back forward. I can do all kinds of really cool stuff. I'm going to see if I can add a whole nother dimension to my videos that, whereas this is very just, you put it where it is and if it works, it works really well. The problem is I have no confidence that this thing will work. And that's a shame. That's the second one I bought in a row. $850 of the cameras that both of them turns out to be flawed designs and pieces of crap. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts on that are and we'll talk to you soon.